Hello, once again, I'm Kevin Turner from Real Estate Talk. Look, there's a great story currently circulating around the, the property investment world, and it r- relates to a, a successful court action by a number of investors, property investors in Mackay. The end result is that councils across Queensland could, be, could soon be forced to pay back hundreds of millions of dollars in rates that have been levied on investors after that Supreme Court decision. Joining me now, Margaret Lomas from Destiny Financial Solutions with a bit more information on this. Hi, Margaret. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Now, what is the background to the Mackay case? Well, the background was that I was contacted by an investor who'd been watching this case very closely, and a group of 400 investors decided to launch a class action suit against the Mackay Council because they were being charged higher rates if they were investors in the area than they would have been if they were owner-occupiers, yet they were receiving exactly the same services for what they were paying. And so they took exception to this and thought that it was inequitable to be occurring that way, decided to retain a law firm, it took Mackay Council to court, and the Supreme Court judge upheld their case and actually said, yes, it was in fact unlawful for these differential rating systems to occur when rates are meant to be charged according to land use, not according to the occupation of the owner. Yeah, that's a key point, and we might come back to that too, but I think this came as somewhat of a shock to a number of councils because they figured that they'd been operating quite legally under some state legislation that wasn't even in place. Yes. Well, you know, it's interesting because when I posted on Brisbane City Council's Facebook page to try to find out why they were actually charging higher rates and a couple of other investors had done the same thing, their response was that they were charging the higher rates because investors get a tax deduction for their rates and owner-occupiers don't. Now, if you just think about that for a moment, not only is that an absolutely ludicrous answer, but it it in itself is flawed. The investors get their tax deduction at all different rates, some at higher rates than others, and if they indeed were going to track those particular deductions, then they should be charging different levels of rates to different kinds of investors as well, which of course is impossible to do. So it was a stupid answer, and it just it, it just doesn't cover the fact that what they're really doing is profiteering. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it comes down to. And I think if you follow that argument through too, um, there would be a number of uh, goods and services that could be charged in addition simply because someone has the right to, to claim that on their tax as part of their employment, Margaret. Well, if you think about it for a moment, I we, we had a little go here at, at the office trying to work out what in this world isn't a tax deduction to someone. And we actually couldn't come up with anything. And um, my finance manager, he rightly pointed out that if he is given a company car and his company is paying for the petrol for him, uh, which is a tax deduction then to the company, should he pay more for the petrol in the car because that petrol is a tax deduction to someone. And he's right. You know, every commodity in this world is a tax deduction to someone for some reason, and that doesn't mean that that person getting the deduction should pay more for it. I understand too when this uh, court action was originally uh, levelled that the intention wasn't necessarily to make it retrospective, uh, that they were simply trying to get uh, an equitable rate distribution, but that now may even be on the cards that uh, it could be retrospective. Yes, and I believe it's an amount of $1.6 million for Mackay Council alone, who, which they would have to repay, and of course they're not comfortable with that. But it could well be hundreds of millions if you consider that we're talking in excess of 20 councils that we know about. There could be more than that. Um, and the ones that, that have come to my attention are Brisbane City, Logan City, Mount Isa, Moreton Bay, Rockhampton, and Toowoomba, and that's just to name a few. Um, but if you think about it, if, if we're talking 20 councils and they're talking up to 2 million each and it'll be higher in places like Brisbane City and Gold Coast City, uh, then we are talking indeed probably up to $100 million. Yes, I know that the councils, in fact, don't, want to, don't even want to engage with anyone in this. We've been trying to get them to make a comment, Brisbane City Council, and they simply won't come to the phone uh, and simply pushing it off to the uh, lo- local government authority. Um, Margaret... Um, what, what do you see as the outcome to this? Obviously, that uh, court decision in Melbourne or that high court decision is going to be challenged. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's already been challenged on, on appeal. Um, and obviously, Mackay Council doesn't want it to happen. I'm sure the other councils are going to be in behind them supporting it because it, it means, you know, the death knell for everybody. Uh, it's interesting you say that you can't engage the Brisbane uh, Matt Mayor on this issue. I post on their Facebook page on their Your Say public forum, which my understanding is it's there for people to express their opinion. They take my posts down. 
they refuse to engage with me and none of the councils that I've been posting on their Facebook pages and none of them will engage with me either. Uh, we managed to mount a fairly um, big uh, social media campaign. We've, we're getting a lot of comments from people because this just doesn't affect Queensland people. This affects people Australia-wide. And if you think about it for a moment, we as investors Australia-wide confidently invest in an area. And because of how we're investing in areas, we're contributing to the improvement in land values in those areas. We're creating a demand, we're pushing prices up. And in doing so, we're improving the capacity of all of those councils to actually charge higher rates anyway. Uh, rates are levied according to the land value of the property. Now here we are not only improving the land value in an area and allowing the councils to then charge more rates overall, but we're providing housing for their residents. And they want to turn around and penalise us for it. It's just not fair and it must stop. It, it raises another point too, Margaret, and that is the right to vote. Uh, yet, you know, the, these investors are actually contributing a lot to the community. Uh, they are paying rates, yet they don't have the rights to vote on some of the decisions that are being made like these by the councils. Mm, absolutely. And we need to have a say in this. And the fact that this has gone by without people even realising, I'm almost ashamed that I didn't know about this. I've been an investor in Queensland for a long time, but because it's never been a question I even thought to ask, I didn't realise that the person next door to my properties, who was living in their own property, was paying less rates than I did. And, you know, once it was brought to my attention, I was horrified, and I can't believe they've gotten away with it for this long, Kevin. It's just, it's not right. Let me play devil's advocate for a moment, if I may. There is another question that's been raised, and that is that this is all about investors um, gaining an advantage over ratepayers by profiting from their investment. Doesn't that mean that they should be forced to pay higher rates in the same way that industrial or commercial property um, landlords actually do? Kevin, the government is on a mission to ensure that this country becomes more self-sufficient in retirement. Already we've been told we have to wait till we're 70 to access our superannuation. Few people even have enough in superannuation, even if they're working till they're 70, to look after themselves in retirement. We have an incredibly large burden with our welfare bill. We have an ageing population who are going to live 20, 30, maybe 40 years into retirement if the latest reports about ageing are true. Yet here we have people who are doing their level best to look after their own retirements. They're not investing in property to profit now. None of us are these big uh, investors who are turning around just trying to pile up investment properties and sell them quickly to profit in the short term. All we want to do is look after our own twilight years so that we're not a burden on the government. How can the government turn around and penalise us in this way when that's what we're trying to do? Okay, Margaret, the final word, I guess. Uh, anyone who's watching this, uh, an investor who wants to join in this action or get more information, where can they go? Okay, they can start by going onto my Facebook page, Margaret Lomas, and if they can just chime in and start to share the posts. We need these posts shared and every time someone wants to make a comment on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, if they can simply hashtag equal rates for property investors, equal rates for property investors, if we're hashtagging that everywhere, if we can get it trending, if we can just keep on sharing, 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 then we're going to get more and more people weighing in on the debate and I think, you know, crowdsourcing is a fabulous idea these days and I think we can have some people power here. Lovely talking to you, Margaret. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Kevin.